They say this is a big rich town I just come from the poorest part Bright light city life, I gotta make it This is where it goes down Hello and welcome to that Double D team, I'm D. This is my review and reaction for episode 5 of Power Season 5. Um, kick off straight into things, we're halfway through the season now so all the uh, storylines and plots are fully in, in motion. So uh, let's kick off with the main three characters featured in this episode. The three main characters of the show as it is as well. Uh, Tommy. So he has a meeting with Vincent and yeah based on last episode Kanan pretty much gave up the information to Vinny that Drake's still alive the guys that he killed wasn't true Sammy lied to him so Vinny has to make, make things right so he, um, he kind of puts Tommy in a situation where he kind of tells him he knows but he don't tell him he knows so Tommy's like yeah I'm sorry I should have told you the truth damn he's like Vinny I, could, I could have helped you man yeah Sammy you lied to me I can't have that Tony here's a gun Pick which one you want to kill. Or all three of his die. You're like, yo, Vinny. Fucking hell, mate. I knew. I, I, I personally, I thought he was just going to kill Sammy straight up. Like, for lying to him. And hope that Teresi just accepted it. Making Teresi choose between his now long, long lost son. And his best friend from life. That's some bullshit, that Vinny. The Teresi gets the gun. Chooses to shoot Sammy. Gun's empty. Yeah. Teresi trying to play it off as well, saying, Oh, I felt the weight of the gun, there was no bullets in it, that's why I didn't shoot you, Sammy. Hmm, I don't think so. Teresi's kind of a smooth talker. But yeah, Vinny's like, Yeah, man, you're out of the family. Done. As it goes without saying as well, Tommy, um, we no longer need your product. So yeah, so Tommy's no longer got him moving his product, him and Ed's moving the product. Dre, no one's moving his product, and he owes me almost two mil to, um, yeah, the, uh, is it the Russians? Is it Simon? Yeah, you don't want to mess with those guys in it, the Ukraines, so pressure. Um, Teresa, he's also working with the Fed still. And he's after um, trying to get information on Tommy, but Tommy's still keeping him at arm's length, especially after what Proctor said as well. Like, it checks out, but just be careful. Um, Tariq's birthday and Raina's birthday, twins, sad occasion. Uh, Tommy turns up for the party, takes Tariq for a drive. Oh, I can't believe your dad's never took you for a drive in the car. So oh, I think I'm too young. Um, pulls up, parts up. Says, I know it was you that told Dre that we were coming for a minute. Why did you snitch, Tariq? And Tariq tries to point out, I did the right thing, man. It was like, I went to get him. I had to, I did it for me. I'm like, yeah, Tommy's like, just like your dad. So like, you don't understand what you've done here. That set off a chain of events, which has put your uncle Tommy in some dire situations when some bad guys are after him. He's like, oh, why did you want to kill Dre anyway? Dre took everything from him. I took my business, took all this. Sent you to what should have been your death, innit, when you went to go see a cop. So yeah, he deserves to get caught, man. You're, you're just a little kid. You don't know shit. <laughs> Socrates. But yeah, that snitch, innit? Tariq's just a little bitch. There's no redemption for this character at all, man. I, I don't know if I'm heartless or shameless, but yeah. Not for me, this character at all. Um, Angela offers Tommy immunity and tries to get him on on his side by actually revealing that he's got a, a tracker in his car, which Sack and Sax and Mac have been using to track his whereabouts. And Angela knew he was there at the airport with the Jimenez, and she thinks he's the distro, but he's not. But she just wants him to give her information so she can get the Jimenez because she was um she's a bit pissed off that the toys are taken off her in it last time. Like, oh, you can't have the Jimenez. She's like, I want them. So yeah, she's just being a little spoiled brat, isn't she? But she's being smart about it. Fair play to her. Crafty, sneaky, typical Angela. Um, but yeah, she, she's under pressure at work, isn't she? Because like, obviously your boss won't tell her about the tracker, the DOJ or DEA from last episode, Steve as well. Obviously, took the Jimenez away from her. And she's like, you know what? Okay. Tommy comes to her apartment late at night, says, give me the tracker. You want the Jimenez, right? I'll get you the Jimenez. You know he's not going to get me, and I'm not going to snitch because I'm not that guy. Just, and we can work it out. Tommy's a smooth little bastard, you know. I'm telling you. Um, Kanan has been stirring the pot, mixing it, whipping it with, between Ghost and Tommy as well to try and get them friction because obviously he just wants them to go at war. Maybe one of them loses the business. He wants his connect from Tommy. 
once Tommy gets wiped out by Simon, goes to either just go back to being normal, so then Kanan can run things in it, because that's overall his main plan. And I didn't actually clock as well with Ghost, well, Kanan's plan last week to um, shoot at the Italians. That was probably what it came to together with Ghost, it was their plan. And you kind of get that revealed today as well by the, the looks when Ghost realised that proper bullets are fired. But Kane was like, no, no, I was there, perfect timing, guardian angel, saved the day. So it was all good. The Italians have cut their severances now with Tommy, which is what they wanted. Just get back to cleaning his money through the club, gives Tommy a check. There's still a bit of friction, so they just leave. It's like, it was, when you were your dad, <laughs> don't talk about me. Don't contact me unless we're um, doing some business. Can't kill Dre at the moment because he's working with me in the project. So... Yeah, Tommy's not happy, Ghost ain't happy, Kanan's rubbing his hands with glee at all, everything's going to order for him. And he then goes off on his little subplot in it, trying to get friction between Cristobal and Dre by killing a few Tainos, because he obviously knows it ain't going to be Jimenez. And because it was like some two bit kills, it's not going to be Ghost and Tommy, which will make Cristobal think it's Dre. And yeah, and that kind of plays out later in the episode. But the way Kanan goes about doing it, we get a cameo from K. Dot. Kendrick Lamar in this episode and he steals the show for me as the character Laces. Uh, kind of reminds me a bit of Bubbles from The Wire but a lot more wild and in your face and crazy version and yeah as soon as he had that voice I'm like yeah you, you've reeled me in here k -Dot. let me see what you've got and he had a bigger cameo than I thought he had about three scenes and each scene he was leading uh, Kane into where the Tainos were and he just rolled up first one on a bike like some Debo drive-by. Uh, the second one a bit corny, he's like, oh yeah, you think too hard, your head will explode, and then he pops out a corner and shoots me in his head and his head explodes, and yeah, so you thought too hard about it. Yeah, kind of funny, but a bit too cheesy for me, man, I'm not really a fan of one-liners, unless they're like proper dry and sadistic, or dark humoured. But no, K-Dot definitely stole, stole the episode for me when he's coming here with Kanan. Kanan obviously almost got his job done as well, because there was friction between Dre and Crystal Bar, but he managed to quay that, and Dre talked his way out of it again boss move but later on in the episode Diego comes to him starts accusing him of planting a gun which got him arrested and, and stuff like this because Diego's on a on a tapped one he's not as calm as his sister but yeah Dre Silver Tongues talks his way out of it and even manipulates Diego into thinking that the Taino's being killed with Dre, Tommy and Kanan and these are the problems we've had and we need to take care of these or it's going to get worse and Diego's like okay I remember Ghost I didn't like him me and you, we keep it between us, we're going to, we're going to kill him. Because all of them, just don't tell Alicia, don't tell my sister, keep it quiet from her. So that's another little subplot going on there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Ghost though, he has quite a chunk in this episode, but it's more emotional, character development, because we're halfway through the season now. And it's been, you've been showing signs of him healing and dealing with the grief, but there's also been signs of him getting his balls back because you've seen him in a, in a grip of his vice under um, Dre and Tate and we're like this ain't familiar for us as fans of the show and the character goes so in recent weeks we've been seeing him get a bit more and not letting these guys take over him but in this episode he just loses it man Tate makes Dre the face of the, is it the QCP the Queen's Project Ghost don't like it um, Simon Stern remember him gives Ghost like come oh, on I'm not all the times I put little obstacles in your way and you just wriggled and sniggled it out. Go ahead and do that. Ghost comes to a plan. Must have looked at some contracts or something. Manages to get Dre fired from his um, Bassett Hotel chain, which is where he was doming it up for the club business and all his dr drug movements. So, bad man. That also cancelled the venue for the party, so they had to move it to Truth and they're having a big party there, fundraiser, which reached the target. But Ghost realised that Tate invited Dre, goes over, has a word, and Tate kind of puts him in his place. Did not appreciate it or like that. I'm like, come on, Ghost, man. Who is this guy? If you want Dre out your club and, and escort it out, then escort him out. Just because he wants to pimp Dre around the room for some donations. It's all good. Yeah. So Ghost has a few drinks, has a few drinks, misses Tariq's party. Thinks that I'm not going to go. Too much grief about remembering Raynor. I'm just going to have some shots. Gets drunk attacks Tate strangling him in front of everyone in the club loses it walks out goes home drunk sees Tariq gives him some J's not happy Tariq's bearer ungrateful just tosses him aside 
I gave Drake's like, I gave you everything. What did you what did you ever need, kid? I gave you everything, man. I provided everything for you. Why are you so, and yeah. And Tamik's just like, oh, you should have told me the truth, you should have told me the truth. Then he starts blaming Ghost that Raina never loved you, or she was the only one that loved you, and maybe she didn't, and she wouldn't have died. And Tariq, you prick, what are you doing, man? Your dad's going through grief because of your actions. You got your sister killed, and he's drunk, and you're now, now ripping a hole into him and blaming him. Toss what? Go back to Cho. Fuck off. Tasha comes out, says, go, she got to go, man, you're drunk. So he goes to church. As a little one-on-one -on -one with the reverend, or at the whole spiel about I want to be a better man, seems to have come to the realisation that he can, so hopefully this is Ghost now back on form for the second half of the season and we can properly get into it and get that vengeance and revenge that we know needs to come. Um, the only final part of the episode, obviously he goes to see Angie at the end, don't because he can't go back to Tasha's. But we've still not seen no grinds between them in this episode so far. I don't know if that was because of like some fan outrage or trying to keep it more PG or not. But usually when you see them together, you usually see sex scenes. Last two episodes, they just met and then it's faded to black. Or the doors closed and stuff like that. So we've been led to assume it happens. We're not seeing it. I'm not too fussed anyway. Final part of the episode. Tariq, after all this, argument with his dad. He says, I'm going back to Cho on my own. Blah, blah, blah. What do you know? Can't get to Cho on his own, is it? Boy calls Kanan, gets in the car, and you think, ah, history repeated, recycling story plots from last season. Yeah, I don't want to see Kanan and Tariq again. It could have impetus, like Tariq could then become properly in the game and get on the Kanan's wing and become a bad man. But I don't want to see it after what he's been. He's a bitch, he's a dick. Well, look at the mistakes he's done before. I don't know. We're not rejuvenating his character to make him likeable or ghost point two. Nah, he needs to get some jail time. Definitely. He even offered to, to do it, man. Tasha should have took his advice. But Tasha should have also said, when it's all, oh, did you wish it was me instead of Raina that died? She didn't answer. That's kind of a bad move. Yeah. Um, yeah, finally, Teresi gave up Tommy and Ghost in one go by telling Sax and Mac that the clean money in his club. Okay, now what are fathers for, eh? I mean, <laughs> oh, Daddy Sunday went to poop. Oh well. Hopefully, Tommy wriggles his way out of it because prior to this, they had a conversation about snitches, and Tommy seemed to have picked up on a point, which is why he then went to go see Angela. So, his conversation with snitches about with Teresa made him come to a decision, and I'm hoping that also made him aware of the situation that Teresa could be setting him up. We'll see you next week anyway, or maybe at least by the end of the season. That was my episode 5 review from Power Season 5. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit up all the other videos in my YouTube channel. Digger and I will be back soon with some more reviews. I think Fear the Walking Dead prediction video for Season 4B is next. We'll also have a few more along with JD from his channel, JD Virtue. We'll be back on our Marvel Netflix series. And Iron Fist Season 1 will be our next one up next month ready in time for Iron Fist Season 2 in September. Until next time, the Double D team, deuce!